I'm a writer, so I've got a pretty good grasp on the English language. I always ace spelling tests in schools. I always knew the meaning of whatever new word we were learning about that day. Because of this, it really sticks in my craw that flat earthers so frequently use words wrong. For the most part, this is pretty simple stuff, and I intend to correct all of these misunderstandings here today. Here are eight words and phrases that flat earthers use completely wrong. Number one, level. A fundamental flat earth argument is to use this true phrase. Water always finds its level. Alternatively, water always is level. Yep, it sure is. This is why we use spirit levels. However, for some reason, flatards also think that level means flat, and it does not. I can explain this with one simple image. A question. Is this shelf flat? Certainly looks flat to me. Yep, that's a flat shelf. Another question. Is this shelf level? And there you have it. Level does not equal flat. End of story. Number two, observable, testable, and repeatable. Flat earthers love to bang on about how there is no observable, testable, repeatable evidence for Earth's curvature. And this is just plain wrong. Let's go through one of the classic proofs and see if it meets the definitions of these three words. Here we have Soundly's observations at Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana. This is a go-to for those of us who fight the globe fight. Here we see that, from an apartment window, one can observe the causeway over the lake visibly curving with the earth over a long distance. What was that word I just used? Observe? Well, that means you can see it. Are you watching this video? Do I have any blind subscribers? Well, for your sake, this is indeed observable. Next word. Testable. Can a person use equipment to take measurements or gather data points with this video? Yes, they certainly can. You can look up the length of the causeway, and then you can use a curvature calculator to find out what you should be seeing. Fun fact, it's exactly what you are seeing. Lastly, repeatable. Meaning, can anyone go and replicate these same results? Well, all you need are a couple of things. A ticket to Louisiana, a Nikon P900, the flat earther camera of choice, and a key to a hotel room. Yep, definitely repeatable, even with different parts of the same body of water. Number three, indoctrination. This word is used against every person who isn't a flat earther. We've all been indoctrinated by NASA. The entire human race has been indoctrinated by one country's space agency, somehow. One could argue that, yes, the idea of the globe is everywhere, but by that logic, we are indoctrinated to believe in literally everything we see in our day-to-day -day lives. Just because things exist don't mean they were put there to brainwash you. That's nonsensical. I'm just curious, what sounds more like indoctrination? A person who, when becoming interested in space, learns the mathematics and the engineering that goes into it and attempts to replicate results on their own, or a person who changes their entire worldview after watching a few YouTube videos made by a yoga instructor. <laughs> Number four, scientism. At a glance, this almost sounds made up. And the way flat earthers use it, it is. When they say scientism, they are referring to the scientific method. However, the word scientism actually implies that science is the governing authority of every aspect of our lives, from morality to beliefs to daily rituals. This is simply not true. If you think it is, then I know of a few thousand well-respected and God-fearing scientists who would like to have a word with you. Number five, debunked. Flatards think they've debunked the globe. In their mind, this means they've proven the globe to be false. Now they've got the definition correct, but they're applying it wrong, especially when they say they've scientifically debunked it. Here's the thing, science doesn't prove anything. In fact, it's specifically designed not to prove anything. What it is designed to do is to allow people to present models to the scientific method of scrutiny. 
the models are evaluated, and when found to be faulty, one goes back to the drawing board with this new information. This process is repeated ad infinitum. So when flatards examine a globe proof and find an anomaly, they proclaim it to be debunked. But that's not how science works. Science is a never-ending process of exploration and learning. It is literally a self-correcting prophecy. Number six, proven liars. This is related to the previous one and something I come across a lot on Facebook. Flat earthers frequently proclaim that NASA are proven liars, but when pressed on this, they can't produce much in the way of proof. Their usual go-to is the moon hoax claim, but there is still, to this day, no conclusive evidence that we didn't go to the moon. As a matter of fact, as time goes on, more evidence that we did go continues to pile up. For instance, the 2009 Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter took some really spiffy photos of the landing sites. But here's the problem. Flat Earthers are too convinced of their cult beliefs to understand what proof actually means. Look at odd reality here. We've caught NASA too many times to count at this point. When? Name one. We catch them glitching. Oh, oh look, more artifacts. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? Okay, so that was just a moving wire in the background that it, you literally saw. It was just leftover frames of that same Catch wire. Glitching. That's all you're looking at. You see that shit on Skype all the time. How is this proof of them slipping up? Pointing out video artifacts and claiming that we've caught NASA too many times to count. You think you've caught them, but you've caught nothing except your own stupidity. Number seven, something from nothing. This is a little more complex, and I'm treading into that offensive territory here, but let's just go for it. Since Flat Earthers tend to be religious, many of them also claim the Big Bang Theory is false and an impossibility. Their usual wording is that it is impossible for the universe to have been created from nothing, because nothing cannot create something. This is true, nothing simply denotes the absence of something so it cannot create. However, the claim is simply a misunderstanding of what the Big Bang actually is. The theory is that Prior to the creation of the universe, all matter was compressed into a super dense and super hot state. Then at some point, this is the only dodgy part of the theory, a singularity, or something like a singularity, occurred. A singularity is a point at which a function takes an infinite value, such as spacetime. Basically it's a point at which all universal laws blend together and cease to have any independent meaning. The singularity caused time and space to develop out of a primeval state resulting in an incredibly fast expansion that eventually gave us the universe as we know it today. I have to tell you guys, I just spent three hours reading about the earliest moments of the universe, and it makes perfect sense that this would fly over a flat earther's head. It's hard for anyone to wrap their head around the first 10 to the negative 43 seconds of the universe. Number eight, eight inches per mile squared. This is like the biggest close but not quite moment in flat earth history. They assert that this is the formula for the curvature of the Earth. It curves at a rate of 8 inches for every square mile. However, this is not exactly the case. The only time that formula really works is as a rule of thumb for geographical surveyors, to compensate for the drop of a target that's at the surveyor's height. The formula starts to become more inaccurate as the distance increases, to a point where it actually doesn't even end up creating a globe. The truth of the matter is that the real formula for determining landmark drop due to curvature is a lot more complicated, taking a lot more factors into account, such as the height of the observer, their distance above sea level, and atmospheric refraction. It looks a little bit like this. Yeah, not quite as simple as the flat earther think it is. Pretty much like everything on our spherical planet. See you over the curve, space cowboys. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. Thank you, and I'm out. Over the next hill, beyond the horizon. Find your place in space. Space is vast and unexplored. There's a lot of work to do.